Dr. Vincenzo Milione. Uh, Dr. Vincenzo Milione is president of the Director of Demographic Studies at the Calandra Italian American Institute at Queens College, the University of New York. He has been the Director of Research and Education responsible for social science research on Italian Americans, Americans as well as conducting institutional research on its faculty, administrative staff, and students. His research has included the educational and occupational achievements of the diverse ethnic communities in the United States, including Italian yeah. Americans, Asians, Hispanics, and African Americans, and those of African American ancestry. He has conducted research on Italian language studies in, at the elementary, secondary, and university levels. His recent Italian language research has demonstrated the increasing demand of, for, Italian, for Italian language due to the globalization of Italian culture among Italian Americans and other cultures. He has also been recognized for his research on high school non-completion rates, negative portrayals of ethnic population in the media, both in Italy and the US. In Italy, generally, it is Southern Italians, uh, specifically used truly Sicilians. Um, and a study to ex an exchange program in global Italian uh, diaspora migration. Uh, diaspora migration. Professor Milioni is a technical civil rights expert designated by federal judge Constance Baker Motley for affirmative action. He has also helped to establish Italian American student scholarship programs such as the Anthony and Eleanor de Francis multi-million dollar scholarship fund. Uh, Dr. Milioni received a doctor of philosophy from the State University of New York at Buffalo in civil engineering specializing in social engineering systems. He also earned a Bachelor of Science in Physics and a Master of Science in Earth and Space Sciences from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. Uh, Dr. Milioni has received four honorary doctors and received five honorary professorships. Uh, Dr. Milioni has received numerous awards and recognition including Pope John II Humanitarian Award for the uh, from the Sociedad Civil Sembrano Valores for Human Outreach to the Young and Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Association of Italian American Educators. Last but not least, I'd like to say that I'm glad to be back after 36 years at St. John's. And, um, and welcome everyone. Understand and try to help you understand everything that the speakers so far have said and what the other speakers are going to say. Because one thing is we can use words and we can use numbers. Because again, uh, unfortunately, uh, people use numbers the way a drunkard uses a light, uh, like uses a lamppost, not for the light, but but for the support. But, but right now, and again, it's going to get a little bit awkward. Uh, I'm going to try to do it from here. And we're going to look at the disparity impact that everyone talked about. Judge Molly talked about it. If there's disparity differences, you've got to explain why. If not, it's going to be discrimination. We're going to look at a case study of Italian Americans in higher education because CUNY happens 
We're going to look at a case study of the Italian American utilization. And we're going to look at CUNY because CUNY has the best data. And you learn why, with what happened in the 70s, why the data is there. And we're going to look at the workforce and the labor pool changes that have affects the utilization of a particular group, and in this case, Italian Americans. And we're going to look at it in the same process as the protection that all other groups have, including the blacks, Asians, Hispanics, Native Indians, females, disabled. Affirmative action is inclusive, includes everybody. And that's why I'm very pleased we have representatives here, not from our community, but from the larger community, from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, from the Office of uh, Federal Contract Compliance, from, uh, uh, from the American Associ uh, Association of Affirmative Action, because we're all included. And we're going to compare that to what has happened, not just at CUNY, but in all city and government agencies, because CUNY is a city and government agency. I'm going to try to be quick. I know this is tough. The data is real. The data is the data collected by the City University of New York for the case study. Uh, and, that, uh, and it looks at the data from 1978. We learned why the data was collected in 1978 to the present and why it's still being collected. And we're going to look at affirmative action plans from 2007 to 2011. One of the things that wasn't said here was that even though we were declared an affirmative action group, we were never included in the affirmative action process until 2007. But now we have the data so we can look at it. And we're going to use the labor pool data from the census data that was approved by Judge Marley. And it's also being used by other universities around the country for the blacks, Asians, like and like the Spanish. And we're going to look at some other schools, because it isn't just CUNY. We're talking about a problem that, thank God, is not as extensive as maybe back in the 30s or 40s. But there is an issue that could exist in other, like in other universities. City University of New York, it's, a, it's the largest urban public university, has 23 college campuses, 450,000 students full-time and part-time, 19,000 professors full-time and part-time, 7,000 administrators, 13,000 support staff, and only 1,900 Italian-American employees. We're going to look not at the overall numbers. I said numbers are, not, numbers are misleading. We're going to look at it the best we could right now by looking at different position groups. The overall instructional staff that includes teaching and faculty, uh, administrative staff. The faculty, the, you know, the administrators, we call them higher education officers. The leadership, which is the executive and deans, and the support staff that keeps us going, which we call the classified staff, the secretary, the historian, security, and so on. And, and consistent to the way affirmative action is done for all groups, blacks, Asians, we look at the full-time employment. And again, if you have a question on that, we have the experts over there that can explain why we have to look at full-time employment. And we're looking at these protected groups, Asians, Blacks, Hispanics, and as you learn, Italian Americans are an affirmative action group. One, one of the beautiful things for me, which I share with some of the representatives here, when I went to the American Association for Affirmative Action Conference, annual conference, 
in Washington last June. And I stood up and I, and I introduced myself. I said, I'm involved in a unique Italian-American affirmative action program. Nobody cringed. No one said that you're crazy. I say I'm involved in the Italian-American affirmative action program among our own Italian-American people. I say I'm involved in the Italian-American affirmative action program at CUNY. What do they say? You're crazy. I really appreciated my, uh, you know, my experience with the American Association for Affirmative Action because I wasn't discriminated. And Native Americans, not here, maybe in Alaska plays a bigger role, but not in New York, that, you know, they're too few to count. And females are protected, women are protected, so they go through the same process. So we'll see what happens to the Italian Americans when they are evaluated within the same process. Remember, numbers don't mean anything unless you understand them, unless you see the life that it gives you. So when we talk about underemployment, we're not talking about one number, we're talking about a process. And the process is that you look at your workforce, you see who are you hiring, and then you look at the labor pool, see who you could hire. It's when you compare them and understand the way you're using them that you could finally say whether a group is underemployed or adequately employed. And that's what I'm going to do for you now. I'm not going to go through this. I'll let the experts talk about what the process of affirmative action is to lead to the reduction of underemployment. Let's talk about the workforce. We've had a unique opportunity to have the data available since 1978 uh, that, and you learned why with the previous speeches, but in 1978, the first data was, like, was collected, and that has kept being collected till, till today. And in that data, the data for the other groups is collected. So what you see here now is the blue is the entire American workforce over 30 years. The red is the other permanent action. Black, Asians, black, you know, who, you know, who come together. But in over 33 years, the Italian American workforce has hardly changed at all. Even though there were major milestones, like in 86, as you heard, Chancellor Murphy re reaffirmed, yes, uh, we are going to do something. And then there's a court case that you heard, in terms of the fact that the judge says something has to be done. And then finally, in 2007, as I told you, we're finally included in the affirmative action plan. So in this period, where affirmative action is applied to the other groups, that they doubled, and, and probably, they could have probably tripled in this period, because their labor pools are far enough. But for Italian Americans, we don't see anything. And, CUNY, as I said, has 24 colleges. 20 of them submit affirmative action plans. So out of these 24 colleges, and that's tricky, I want to catch the numbers to summarize a very complicated process. But out of those 24 colleges, one out of seven, this one, have decreased the percentage of representation of Italian Americans since 33 years ago. Uh, what are the numbers? Nine out of ten have decreased in percentage of Italian Americans since the court case in 92, 20 years ago where the judge says, no, you have a commitment to go and increase the workforce, nine out of 10 of the colleges have gone down. And since, uh, 
And since we want to include it in the affirmative action process, which meant that now the affirmative action offices, like, like what we have some here, will look at and say, if a physician is underemployed, underutilized, we're going to make a special effort to make sure, not that we give that position away, but we're going to find people that are qualified for that position and make sure that they have a fair chance to compete. And that's all affirmative action is asking, nothing more. But nine out of 10 of the colleges were there, 18 colleges. And within year by year, in this case, 20, 2010 to 2011, uh, what is that? Uh, six out of 10 of the colleges went down. That's not a point of action. We look at faculty. I'm not going to go through it, too many numbers. But you see, now that I explained it to you, you see the same pattern there. No, basically no change, even within those milestones that happened on the entire American uh, affirmative action history. Again, you see, even among faculty, many of the colleges have lost their representation, not increased their representation. We look at, it, we look at the administrators. The same, the same way to look at the square as I explained it before, but you see, Red, the affirmative action groups have, have doubled. The Italian Americans stay pretty much the same. But isn't it interesting? In 1992, 93, there's a bump. Like all of a sudden, there's some action taken. But right after that, it goes down again. And, and again, you see, among the colleges, Many, most of the colleges have lost their representation among the administrators of Italian-Americans. Leadership, the same situation. That the executive leadership of Italian-Americans at CUNY has gone down. There are some uh, token uh, executives appointed, but it's gone down. Well, the uh, leadership among the other groups have gone up. But doesn't mean the other groups are doing great, you know, because there are issues within these groups. It's just I'm trying to summarize this within a simple graph. But overall, the affirmative action process for the other groups is working. Could it be worked better? Probably. But it is working. Again, it's not just across the whole college, uh, university is college by college experiencing these de decreases. The support staff, your secretary, your custodians, your security people, electricians, plumbers, whatever you hire to keep the university running. Since 33 years ago, Italian Americans are half.